Hi, I'm Rebecca Harris and welcome to this edition of Faces and Places. Today we are at the Central Activity Center located in Phoenix City, Alabama and I have Kelvin Collins here with me today and he's going to be talking about a subject that's very interesting to everyone because I think everybody out there is involved in this in one way or another. I know I get at least five or six phone calls a day from people trying to commit a scam or a fraud. So, Kelvin, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what your job is? Okay, well, I'm with the Better Business Bureau of uh, the serving the fall line quarter. We have offices in Columbus, Macon, and Augusta. Mm -hmm. Serve 77 counties in Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. And what we try to do is educate consumers to avoid those scams that are trying to separate them from their hard-earned money. And really, one of our main goals is to help make businesses better. Mm -hmm. So if you're spending your hard-earned money with local businesses, then you don't have the money that's going to go overseas to some right. of the scam artists that are trying to take it. Well, that is a very, very good service for the community. What would I, I know that these things kind of go in spurts. So what would you say is the hottest scam going on right now? Well, right now we're seeing a lot of uh, people calling about the IRS scam just okay. because, you know, tax season has just concluded and it's still on everyone's mm -hmm. mind. So when you get those telephone calls saying that you owe your owe taxes and that you need to pay right now and they're going to or they're going to send the sheriff over to to arrest you. Mm -hmm. uh, the IRS does not do that. They don't call and threaten and harass you to uh, get payment right then. Right. Um, when you get those calls, hang up. And that's hard for some people to do because, oh no, it's the IRS. They're scared. But what we try to r remind them mm -hmm. is usually those are people that don't owe taxes. Or they've not filed, you know, they filed their taxes and they've not heard back from it yet. Right. So if you receive a call saying that they're the IRS, 99% chance it's a scam. Now the IRS does utilize some uh, telemarketing and collections of old debt. But the difference between the calls that people are receiving and the legitimate callers is they don't take payment over the telephone. They, they send you to the IRS website to make your payment. They don't take anything. Now the scam artists, they want you to wire transfer money to them okay. or use a prepaid debit card. Uh, so it could be a uh, money grant card, a um, iTunes gift cards, believe it or not, are very popular right now. Wow. But they use those gift cards because they're not tracked. Right. And once you send it, it's just like giving them cash. Mm -hmm. Well, I've also heard that, that there's a lot of fraud going on right now where people go to file their taxes and then they're told that someone else has already filed their taxes. Mm -hmm. So um, what happens when that situation occurs? Well, unfortunately, that's over the past several years that's mm -hmm. become more and more common mm -hmm. and uh, the IRS is doing everything that they can to try to lessen it and, and a lot of things have worked but it's still a big problem for a lot of people but <clears throat> when people steal your identity unfortunately that's the gift that continues to give year yes. after year after year because it just doesn't go away. The IRS has uh, procedures in place for someone that has been in that situation because believe it or not it does happen a lot mm -hmm. and usually what they will do is they will get some verification from you you have to fill out a fraud alert uh, typically we recommend that people get a police report and keep a copy of that police report with you and I'll come back to the reasons on that in just okay. a minute but you go through that fraud process and they will end up giving you back your your refund and everything but they have to go through that process in order to be able to write it off for if they've already sent the refund to another another individual that claimed to be you. It's it's not fun, it's not quick, mm -hmm. and it's very frustrating, but unfortunately it is the world that we live in because identity theft is growing each and every year and you know there's as as long as there's ways that scam artists can use our identity mm -hmm. to make money, they're going to do that. Okay. Now the reason I said that you need to keep a police report with you is because if someone steals your identity, they're going to use that identity over and over and over. And I know a situation where a lady was coming through town several years ago and was arrested because of an outstanding warrant. And the warrant was because of something that the person that stole her identity had done, not her. Oh wow. 
And unfortunately, this happened late on a Saturday, and she was in jail until Monday until she could prove that she had been a victim of identity theft. So always keep that police report with you because you never know when you might want to pull it out mm -hmm. and, and have some, some proof that you were a victim. So we have to be proactive and we have to inform ourselves as to what we need to do. And if anyone has any questions about that particular situation, do they talk to the IRS or who would they talk to about it? Yeah, the first person I would contact on that would be the IRS mm -hmm. and contact the IRS. They'll, they'll lead you through the process. If someone, a lot of times people, they know that they've been a victim of identity theft and they just don't know where to mm -hmm. turn. If they want to call the Better Business Bureau, we, we try to walk them through because sometimes Sometimes you know where you need to go, you just need somebody to take your hand and lead you there. Right, and, and it can be a very, very traumatic thing. I just had it happen to a very good friend of mine, and she was saying that these people had gotten a lot of information off of her Facebook. Mm -hmm. So can you talk to me a little bit about social media and what people should and shouldn't do? Yeah, I get questions all the time from people saying, how do they get this information? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we give them a lot of that information freely. Right. Uh, we, sh we overshare on social media. We provide information that is going to help a scam artist know exactly what our family's doing, what we're involved in. I mean, we go as far as to uh, provide countdowns of when we're going to leave going on a cruise that mm -hmm. just tells everybody on our friends list that my house is going to be empty right. in 17 days. Right. You come take everything I own. So don't overshare with social media. Mm -hmm. I know it's tempting and, and we feel like it's a close-knit community, but you don't know the information that you're sharing. You don't know how your friends are gonna be sharing it and you can only protect yourself right. with the privacy settings. You don't know how they're protecting it. And you know, people ask me all the time about identity theft and identity theft is, it's something that we have to live with at this point mm -hmm. because we can protect ourselves but we can't determine how our doctor's office is going to keep our information or how our uh, electric company is going to maintain it or if the Department of Justice or Department of Defense is going to have a breach or something like that. Right. Same thing with social media. Mm -hmm. You only protect your privacy settings, not everybody else's. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about how you can protect yourself. Some of the things that that you can do from to protect yourself from an identity theft is don't get the pre-approved credit card offers that come. There's a way that you can opt out, and I'm sure that you'll show that on the screen mm -hmm. how people can opt out. But you can opt out for five years or for life from receiving those pre-approved credit card offers. I never knew that. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, while we're getting them, we think the best thing to do is just to tear them up and put them in the trash. But or shred them. Or always shred them. Yes. That's the best thing that you can do. If you don't own a shredder, mm -hmm. get a shredder. But you can stop receiving those. That protects you in a lot of ways. Also, be sure where you're using your, your information. If someone asks you for your social security number, ask them why do they need that and how are they going to protect it. And it, it doesn't make you rude or anything. I, my, my son came along one time and he was filling out something said it asked for my social security number and I almost put it down I said well why'd you almost put it down I thought we would talked about this and he said it asked for it well just because a form asks for your social security number doesn't mean that they need your social security number right. so so check on those things also if you mail your bills don't mail them from the curbside mailbox mm -hmm. you know that red flag does a lot more than tell the postman that right. your mail's ready it that tells like tell somebody hey come and yeah call there's, my mailbox. there's a wealth of information yes. and data there so you know scam artists will mm -hmm. come through and they'll steal your mail and mm -hmm. and let's say you were mailing your credit card payment well now they have your checking account number your transit number they have a copy of your uh, signature and they have your credit card number they have all the information they need to steal your identity and another thing that they really like to do with the stealing mail mm -hmm. is there's a thing called check washing where they can wash the checks and remove all of the ink except for your signature and then rewrite the check to them or whoever they want to uh, write it to and when you get the check back from the bank it looks like that was it was never tampered with mm -hmm. but in fact it was it was washed yes I've had that happen to me before 
one of the things that the bank suggested was to always write your checks in permanent ink. Mm -hmm. And the and I use the little sharpie permanent markers when I write a check. Yeah, the type you know the felt tip pens mm -hmm. aren't good to write checks with, okay. and, and many times those are the best so or the easiest to, to get. That. No, don't do that. Okay. Use a use a ballpoint ink or a or permanent uh, ink pen. Okay. Which those are out there, and better yet, uh, I know that. Some people just really don't like to use online banking, but use online banking. So uh, online banking is safer than writing a check? And if you're going to mail it, send it through the mail because you think about it, who knows who's going to get that uh, that check? You know, it goes to the mail, There's goes through mm -hmm. processing houses, it goes to the company going through different people. So if you can utilize online banking and, and you know, where it emails you the, the receipt or the bill or whatever, that saves all of those steps. So, yes, always be careful, but I would recommend that you use the online banking opportunities that you have. Well, um, we talked on Senior Moments about things that are geared more towards senior citizens and mm -hmm. scams, but I also know there are a lot of scams out there that target young people. So can you tell me a little bit about that? You were just talking about you had informed your son about not putting his social security number down. Yeah, there's there's lots of um, scams that target young people. Mm -hmm. You know, I have two college-age uh, sons, and when you go to college, one of the first things that happens is everybody's trying to sell you something. Credit card companies are trying to get you to apply for a credit card. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, they want socials. And, you know, you need to teach your kids don't share that with anybody that doesn't need it. Right. Always know why you need it. But also one of the things that we see for college students a lot of times is if they're try looking for a place to, to live, mm -hmm. uh, going to college campus and they want to live off campus, they have apartment rental scams. And these are listings where you find an apartment that looks ideal. It looks like, wow, this is just what I want. It may be you know, $300 a month less than what you would be expecting it. But what happens is scam artists will steal the listings from legitimate companies and place them on Craigslist or different sites. Mm -hmm. And then when you call them or email them or contact them, they say, well, I need you to send the deposit and first month's rent. Okay. And, you know, it just seems like a dream come true. Mm -hmm. You send that money, which is, again, wire transferred or using a debit card because they always tell you that they're traveling outside the country and they can't meet you at the location. Mm -hmm. But when you send that money, you, you don't receive the keys or anything. And we've had people actually go to a vacation rental house and think that they'd rented this for their vacation and the homeowners are still there. Wow. So same thing happens with apartments. So this, uh -huh. you know, vacation rentals and apartment rentals for college students are, are real big with the rental scam. So be very careful when you're, you're sending money. And you know, a good rule of thumb is don't wire transfer or don't use an, an unusual form of payment to anyone. Okay. Well, I know one thing that I get in the mail all the time is things about magazines that I did not order mm -hmm. or would never order. So tell me a little bit about uh, mails, mail solicitation and magazines or, or anything like that. Well, we, we hear from a lot of uh, consumers that receive magazines or, or different things mailed to them mm -hmm. that they say, I did not order this. I, right. I don't know why I received it. Well, the good thing is Federal Trade Commission says that if someone, if a company sends you something that you did not order, you get to keep it as a free gift. Now, what I usually tell consumers is, you know, offer to send it back. So if you receive, you know, a, a book or a magazine mm -hmm. that you didn't order and they're trying to charge you for it, Tell them, look, according to the Federal Trade Commission, I know that I don't have to pay this. However, being a good person, if you will send me a prepaid packing label, I'll send it back to you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm going to keep it. And that usually gets you off their mailing list pretty quickly when you, when you know your rights and you tell them that, okay, you're going to pay to send this back. I'm not, I'm not taking it and I'm not paying for it. Okay, this, this is a big one. What about when someone calls you and tells you you've won a lot of money <laughs> and you get so excited and you barely listen to the details? Typically that happens. This you, happens you, a lot. You hear you've won and, uh -huh. and you know the brain cuts off. But right. typically when you hear that, they're always asking for money. 
And the thing that we want consumers to understand, if you win something, you don't have to pay for it. Free is free. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you slice it. If you win a free prize, you should not have to pay for it. You shouldn't have to pay shipping. You shouldn't have to pay handling. If you have to pay, you're paying for it. Right. So when you win those, stop and ask yourself, did I really win something? Are they asking for money? Mm -hmm. Did I enter the sweepstakes or this contest? And usually the, the answer to that is no. Uh, I, I talk to a lot of consumers who will say, well, I sent so much money for this because I had won this contest. And I always ask, did you enter it? Well, I don't remember it, but I might have. Well, if you don't remember entering a contest, do not send any money to them. But typically, um, we see a lot of foreign lotteries mm -hmm. coming in. And the foreign lotteries are illegal to play in the U U.S. So if you're getting a, a lottery notice from Madrid, Spain, you can rest assured that it's a scam just trying to take your money mm -hmm. because you need to go to Spain to be able to play the uh, lottery like that. Also, a lot of these um, scams like this will use fake checks. They will send you a check wow. and they will tell you that you have won $10 million and we know that you probably can't afford to pay the taxes and everything right now, so we're enclosing a check for $3,000. Send 25 of that, 25, deposit that into your account, send 2,500 back to us and you can keep the $500 until your winnings come. Well, mm. most consumers think, oh wow, they're sending me my money, yeah. I'm gonna get, yeah. well, once you do that, the check usually ends up being a counterfeit check or a stolen check. Mm -hmm and it takes about a week and a half to two weeks for that to come back from the bank. In the meantime, you've already wire transferred $2,500 of that 3000 back to the scam artist. You spent the other $500 and then the bank calls you up and says, hey, we need that $3,000 back. So the consumer ends up holding the bag. Wow. And anything that they've wired to that scammer, they've just lost because yes. the chances of getting that back are, are nil. Well, I've seen this also where people email you and tell you you've won this contact us at this this address mm -hmm. and we'll tell you more details about how to go through with this deal which is not a deal at all <laughs> it's just a big old scam so if you have any kind of questions about these kinds of things there's always somebody to talk to about before you just jump in there and do it no matter how excited you are at the prospect of winning some money well i always talk to consumers and they they usually say that whoever they're talking to says now keep this Keep this between us. Don't yes. tell your family or anybody. Yes. Well, yeah, they want secrecy. I've had so that if they ask before. you for secrecy, that that's a huge red flag. When I talk to people that have fallen victim to scams, the one thing that they always say is, "I knew it was too good to be true." You know, something just didn't feel right. Something in their gut told them. Exactly, mm -hmm. and that's what I try to tell consumers: go with your gut. Right. Go with that first instinct. If right. if you've received that telephone call and it doesn't seem right then that's, that's your ingrained sense of protection looking out for you. So, you know, when you, when you fall victim, um, don't, feel, don't feel like you've done something wrong, mm -hmm. report it. I also talk to a lot of consumers, especially senior citizens, who will not report when they've fallen victim to a scam. And when you ask them, well, why, why won't you do that, and you finally get to the mm -hmm. bottom of it, they don't want their kids to think that oh, mom can't take care of her finances right. anymore so I need to take the checkbook and things like that. So they're embarrassed. Mm -hmm. So when we hear of all these different uh, scam statistics, we're actually only seeing the tip of the iceberg. You know, I think it's probably a lot more uh, prevalent than we even know. I'm sure it is. Um, we, we just recently got bombarded with calls about we've won a free cruise. So, do you know anything about that? The free cruises, we've, we've seen those for years. Uh -huh. uh, even before the, before the internet was popular, uh, people would win free cruises. And I remember the phone used to ring, we'd pick it up and you'd hear this big old horn sound of a big <laughs> ship, you know, and then they'd go into their whole little spill and usually it was something recorded and you knew it and you just click. But now they're calling and it sounds like they're from legitimate cruise lines mm -hmm. and they want to try to give you a deal because the cruises are not being filled. So uh, please talk to us a little bit about that. And I know sometimes people will innocently give out information because they're just trying to find out a little bit more and try to keep them talking a little bit more right. to find out if it is real. 
And in yeah, the meantime, I know they're gathering up information that we don't need to give them. Yeah, they, they're really good at pulling the information that they mm -hmm. need. But uh, along the cruises, we've talked to some of the people that actually won these free cruises and they went and, and in the end, they ended up paying more for that free cruise mm -hmm. than they would have paid if they had just gone to a cruise line and booked the cruise. Because what they don't tell you is typically these things are some type of timeshare that right. they're getting. Right. So they're either going in and having to spend most of their time on the cruise ship in, in seminars mm -hmm. where they're trying to sell, usually high pressure sales. But also, you know, the transportation cost is usually not not associated so mm -hmm. you know if you got airfare that goes somewhere they start adding on a lot of port fees um, you know documentation fees so what we found is usually these free trips end up costing as much if not more than if you had just gone to one of the cruise lines and said I want to book this trip now we also uh, I dealt with a uh, couple a long time ago that won one of these free cruises went down and the cruise ship that they were using was a very small cruise ship, not the big cruise ship that they were expecting, but they were expected to uh, work their way through this oh free cruise. <laughs> so they, they ended up uh, leaving the ship before mm -hmm. it actually left, but mm -hmm. when they found out, every, they just said it felt so shady. Yes. So there are situations where it could be dangerous if you get involved in some of these. So you want to make sure that you're dealing with reputable companies, you're checking them out, and remember, if they call you on the telephone, it's your telephone. You can hang up. That's right. You own it. Uh, if you're getting these things on email, check them out. You know, emails are coming in uh, every day. Mm -hmm. And if you believed everything that you, you received, you'd end up sending money to everyone living under a bridge. That's right. I want to talk to you a little bit about this too. With with us being Southerners, we're so used to being hospitable and trying not to be rude to anybody. Mm -hmm. But these people don't care about us. Right. They are out to hurt us and steal from us. So it's okay if you say, I don't believe you, click, hang up, or just don't even give them the time of day and just go ahead and hang your phone up and don't waste any time and don't get stressed out about it because it's something that is happening and it's been happening for a long, long time. It's just now that we have modern technology and we have so many different ways for them to get our information, it, it seems like it's just such a bothersome thing happening right now. But we are in control of that. So don't let it stress you out and just go ahead and hang up the phone or call somebody and do something about it. So I know y'all get just inundated from phone calls mm -hmm. about people telling you about the latest scams that are happening to them. And I overheard you talking a little while ago about uh, some of the different tools that you use that sounded like fun to educate people about what to do if this situation happens to them. So can you tell me about that? Yeah, the, um, you know, when people are using the telephone, things like that to try to, the one thing I try to tell everybody, you own your telephone and you own your door. Yes. So when someone comes to your door or they call you on the telephone, hang up. It's our southern hospitality gets us in trouble a lot of times. Uh -huh. It's not rude. You would not stand on the side of 14th Street and let somebody pick your pocket. Right. So don't let them do it at your front door. Right. But we sometimes we do get opportunities to where we can shop some of these offerings that people have. And you know, you go back to the early years. You know, the Better Business Bureau was founded around 1912, and there was there's been a lot of scams come through. Mm -hmm. And I hear people talk about one of the uh, ads that used to go around was the best roach uh, killer around. Mm -hmm. And when people sent in their money and got it, it was a block that the instruction said, place roach on block A, hit with block B. Oh. <laughs> you know, so, so, you know, sometimes you just have to watch what you're getting. Mm -hmm. and several years ago, I was um, working with the BBB in Huntsville, Alabama, and we had cards going around the county where you got a f you won a free 1996 Ford Explorer and we had people calling and finally I took one of the postcards and sent it in you know I ended up paying 40 to 40 something dollars because I bought the extended warranty on it but 
I sure enough, I got a 1996 Ford Explorer, mm -hmm. Model 4 Explorer. It was a model vehicle that you put together with glue. Oh, no. So <laughs> you got exactly what the card was telling right. you you got, but you didn't really get what you thought you got. Mm -hmm. So sometimes our perception and what we what we want to hear is not what we're actually hearing or seeing. And many times uh, that's where that's where our gut instinct comes in. Mm -hmm. And these people are trained to find our weaknesses, to find out the most personal information they can about us to get to us. So just be careful what you share on social media, like Kelvin said. And also, um, you don't have to carry your social security card around mm -hmm. with you. That's very dangerous. And I heard that there's going to be new Medicare cards. Yes, uh, Medicare cards uh, are being redone uh -huh. and one of the things that's happening is the social security number is being removed from the Medicare card. Well that's good. That's a great thing because uh -huh. we've, we've for years we've been telling consumers don't carry your right. um, social security card with you and at the time insurance companies and Medicare was using that number as an identifier and uh -huh. you know insurance companies have gone away from that over the last few years and now Medicare is doing it so over the next several months consumers will be getting those new cards and you know, Georgia and Alabama, South Carolina and Florida don't receive theirs until after June. Um, but it's going to be a rollout and we're, we're excited to see it. Oh, that's great. And I know that, you know, so many businesses and organizations are really stepping up and taking the, the steps that they need to help protect our identity and to help keep us from scams and fraud. Um, and w with your job, it's it's very encouraging that y'all are spending so much time on this and I would like for you to tell us a little bit more about some of the programs that you have and if you have a business out there or school or, or a church group or whatever and you want to know more information about this we can contact Kelvin and he can hook you up with a speaker that can come and talk to you a little bit and teach you more about this give you some tools they have a new booklet out that teaches you more about these things so tell us a little bit more about that Kelvin. okay well we do have an education side and what we try to do is um, you know, we hear about data breaches almost on a mm -hmm. daily basis. I mean, this week we've heard, you know, Chili's uh, was breached with credit card, debit cards, Equifax just a, not long ago. And it's not a matter of if you are a victim of a data breach, it's when. Right. So what we try to do is educate consumers on what to do when these things happen, how to protect themselves, lessen your chances. You're not going to prevent it but you can lessen your chances. And all that comes down to education. So we do a lot with, uh, we're, in, we're in the high schools trying to do education to you know, juniors and seniors because those are tomorrow's business leaders right. and consumers. And that's where you really wanna, wanna try to teach. But also we do workshops for churches, senior groups, things we have, buying a, uh, buying a car. Oh, uh, wow. It's called Deals on Wheels. Uh -huh. And a lot of people don't realize that you know, they think when they go buy a car, it's just one transaction, mm -hmm. but it's not. There's four different transactions that take place during that process, and all of four of those are negotiable. So you have to know the steps to make sure that you're getting the best price on the car. Make sure you're getting the best price on your trade-in. Make sure that you're getting the best financing. Mm -hmm. And then those extended service agreements, you know, those, those things you can end up paying three thousand dollars for a service agreement you could have gotten for eight hundred. Oh, let's talk so. about that too. I've been getting so many phone calls lately about my extended warranty <laughs> has expired. Yeah, I had <laughs> I had someone uh, back last year. A guy called me up, said I got this call. They won't leave me alone. They're trying to sell me. Uh, they're telling me that my warranty is expiring on my 1972 pickup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, granted. That one expired a few years ago. Yes. But a lot of these that are calling you now mm -hmm. are companies that are just trying to get you to pay for that service agreement. Now, what we found, and it, within our office we call these Swiss cheese agreements because there's so many holes that allow the, the company not to pay for the uh, repairs mm -hmm. that it's not even funny. But consumers will pay you know, $300 for this extended warranty and then the next thing you know, they go to the shop and, oh, transmission's not covered under this one, so mm -hmm. you end up paying out of pocket. But they always find a reason that they're not, you know, they're not gonna pay or 
they only use certain uh, repair shops that you may not have in your area. So right. typically when you get these aftermarket uh, service agreement companies calling you, it's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. If you're going to get a service agreement, usually the best way to get that is from the dealership that you buy the automobile from. And you know, I mentioned earlier that they were negotiable. You know, make sure that you're getting the best plan for you and for your car. Right. And what a lot of people don't realize is you know, they may get a five-year extended service agreement along with their car. Mm -hmm. Well, they're getting that five-year extended service agreement, but they're really only getting two because you've got a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty on your vehicle. Right. So you're going to use that warranty. And then the other two years will come on the extended. Mm -hmm. you, you, so, so that five years, to yeah, you pay attention to that language. Uh -huh. You're not, sometimes you're not getting exactly what you think you're getting. So. Well, you have so many things that we could just make another whole Faces <laughs> and Places show about I'm going to buy a car. Um, I overheard you talking about the tools that you use to educate people, and one of them that, that perked my interest was bingo. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Yeah, it's a workshop that we, we use, uh, especially with, with seniors uh -huh. and with uh, uh, students. Okay. But it's, everybody likes bingo. But it's a scam bingo, mm -hmm. and every time a number is drawn, you know, it will talk about a different scam. So, you know, the cards that we pick up will talk about that scam, and we have fun, we win prizes, we get all this accomplished, but we learn something in the process. And, and that's one of the things that we, we try to do. You know, people like to have fun, mm -hmm. and they like to learn, but they'd rather learn if they're having fun. That's right. You know, one of the things that we used to do with uh, middle school students uh, when we were trying to teach peer mediation and, and conflict resolution with them is we'd put a bowl of M&Ms in the middle of the table and we'd put them across the table and, and like they were arm wrestling and we'd say, okay, every time you put your opponent's hand on the table, uh, you get an M&M. &M. Mm -hmm. If they put your hand down, you get an M&M. And you'd have kids that would fight to the death, you know, <laughs> arm wrestling. And then one person over here would it would click. And it's like, there's you an M and M. There's me an M and M. There's you an M and M. And it, you know, there's ways to work together to get what you want right. without shoving our thoughts and ideas down right. somebody's throat. So there's there's tools that we can use to to educate while we're also uh, learning. Well, I really like that. I think that it's very intimidating. It's scary. Mm -hmm. It's it's very, very inconvenient for us to answer the phone 50 gazillion times a day. <laughs> <laughs> it's frustrating, but it's happening. Mm -hmm. So, in, like I said earlier in the show, instead of getting frustrated about it, learn as much as you can about how to fight this situation. We're not helpless. And like Kelvin said, it's your phone, it's your door, it's your mailbox. Mm -hmm. You have control over it. These people don't have control over you. So, Kelvin, thank you so much for coming and speaking to us today. Well, thank you. I appreciate you having me. It's been a pleasure. And do you have a website they can go to if they want to know more about a particular scam? Absolutely. If you're interested in um, learning more about anything that we do, go to bbb.org. Okay. Uh, you'll put in um, your area and go directly to, to the site. But also, one of the things that we have on there, if you go to bbb.org, up at the top, you can click on Scam Tracker and you can either enter a scam phone call that you've received or you can find out what scams are in your area and you can narrow it down to a zip code. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for providing those tools and for giving us this great information today. And I wanna thank you for joining me on Faces and Places. Right. Thank you. Where you never know whose face you'll see <laughs> or which place will be. And until next time, take care of yourselves. <laughs>